Okay. Hey everybody! Hi! Welcome back. Uh, it is Wednesday once again, and so I am here to bring you the new comic book day rundown for Dark Horse. I am Kara, the social media strategist at Dark Horse, and with me is... Brett, assistant editor. Yeah, Brett's mm -hmm. back to help us out because he works on a lot of these books. Yes. So thank you for joining us again, Brett. Always. Um, so really quick, we have um, some announcements for you, and I'm just going to remind you that as usual, all you need to do is share this video for a chance to win all of these comics that we're going to talk about. So that's a pretty good deal. Again, just share this video here on Facebook. Make sure that your share is set to public so we can see it, and then check back tomorrow to see if you have been drawn as the winner. Um, moving on quickly to some announcements. If you did not see, we have announced our free comic book day comics for this year. Um, the free comic book day happens every year. Participating comic shops get a whole bunch of free comics from all the different publishers. Um, you can see details on every single issue at freecomicbookday.com. Ours are, the adult gold offering is a combination of Black Hammer yes. and Stranger Things, which yes. is cool. So you get a new original story set in both of those worlds. Yes. And then the silver all ages offering includes a new Minecraft comic which we announced Sorry, a while back, we're gonna have a series coming out. Um, so this is your first look at uh, an original Minecraft story. And yes. then it also includes an Incredibles 2 comic. So again, some exciting new stories that are original content that you haven't seen before that you can get for free yeah. on Free Comic Book Day. They're all good, I've read all of them. Nice. All good. I haven't read them yet, <laughs> so you're ahead. Um, other big news, you may have seen that the Hellboy movie trailer, might, or might the have seen first it. one, you might, might, you might have seen it. Um, it's out. Uh, Lionsgate put that out finally. So we shared that as well. Um, you can see it on all of our social media or on theirs if you haven't already. Um, I think it looks actually pretty true to the comics. That's what Mike's been saying. We also shared a lot of articles and interviews around the movie um, last week as well. You can see all of those again on our website, on our social media, and they're originally posted at IGN.com. Um, also, in exciting TV movie news, um, the, uh, I don't know if any of you have read uh, Victor Santos's Polar series. Yes. It's a really cool action noir yeah. comic. We have some new ones coming out soon, a new um, collection, and we're re-releasing some of the previous volumes right. because Netflix is adapting it for a movie starring Mads Mikkelsen. So I love Mads. I'm sure a lot of you love Mads. Um, he looks awesome as the Black Kaiser, the True. the title role, the assassin. So. Um, we shared uh, the first look as at Mads as the Black Kaiser here on our social media as well. Mm -hmm. So check that out. It's really cool. We'll share more news about that coming up. The movie has been bumped up, so it'll be coming out at the end of the month on Netflix. So, so soon. Yeah, I know. So it's, it's crazy. Um, so we got a lot going on. Uh, keep checking back on our social media to see more. Um, add that to your watch list on Netflix when it comes up. Um, other things that we've announced recently, Isabelle is a hit French comic by two Spanish artists, artist and writer, um, and that is a really, really cool story that I'm excited we're bringing to English audiences for the first time. Um, Isabelle is the title character. She is the daughter of an Irish sorceress and a samurai warrior. So good. Um, yeah, and now she's traveling Japan, uh, wandering around looking for her long lost sister as a bounty hunter, and along with her travels the ghost of her dead father. There's so much happening there. There's a lot going on. It looks so good. The artwork Sorry. is beautiful. So that's coming out next year. Um, check out darkhorse.com and look at our news feed, our blog, to see a lot more announcements and info. And with that, I'm going to jump us over to digital sales. Yes. Take it away, Brett. So there's a New Year sale happening right now. You need to get on it. So it saved 50% <laughs> on everything on Dark Horse Digital. Just enter the code NEW YEAR in all caps at checkout. Um, so if you want to buy every single volume of Berserk, you can do that for 50% <laughs> off. Or if you want to buy every Hellboy comic ever published, you can do that too. Ever published. Off. I want to do that. But I you, you probably don't need to. <laughs> no. <I don't. laughs> um, we also have another digital sale, which is exciting for fans of Halo. Since we have a new comic coming out this week, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, we also have a Halo Mega Bundle, so you can get all 50 previous Halo comics uh, for only $39.99. That includes all of our previous series like The Rise of Atriox um, and a whole bunch of others, Collateral Damage, Fall of Reach, 
Or if you just want the single issues, they're only 99 cents, and as usual, the graphic novels are uh, $4.99 or an omnibus $6.99. So those are all at digital.darkhorse.com, and uh, we'll drop some links below when we are done with this video. Yeah. Now, comics. Comics time. On to the comics. All right, guys. Halo is back. Speaking it's of back. Halo. And with that, Linda is also back. Um, <laughs> With the new series, Halo Lone Wolf Number 1, with this beautiful, incredible co cover art by Christian Ward, who is doing yeah. variants for all of them, or the standard covers for all of them. I think he's doing all the standards. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> Written by Ann Tool, with art by Kieran McEwen, J.L. Straw, and Dan Jackson. Set, sent on a covert mission with the rest of her team, Spartan Linda 058's skills in infiltration and marksmanship are called upon to end the threat posed by a wanted scientist on a distant planet. With only an Oni AI at her side, Linda must fight, fight her way, fight through both the dregs of the Covenant and the hostility of a lost human settlement to stop the rogue scientist in his tracks. Yeah. Yeah. It's all Linda all the time. All the Halo goodness. Let me, let's, let's look at some Halo Get goodness some sniper here. action. Here's a nice like planet uh, picture from uh, this comic. It's a really good looking comic. Um, Kieran is great. Um, I love yeah, his art. The art for this is beautiful. Yeah. yeah, and I know a lot of people will be happy to see Linda getting her own story, mm -hmm. so this is pretty exciting. Um, Halo will also be sharing some of the news about these comics as they go on, so we hope you guys enjoy this new Halo series. Yeah. Also this week, Hey, we have a new Stranger Things. This is issue number four. Um, so this is actually the conclusion of the first Stranger Things miniseries, which has been going on. If you haven't been reading this, get to your local comic shop and see if they can get you all of the issues now. Each single issue has had four different covers that you can choose from, or you can get them all if you're a collector. Um, so this is the, as I said, this is the final issue of this particular miniseries, where we're seeing what happened to Will in the Upside Down. Um, while the rest of the folks in Hawkins were searching for him during season one. So this series ties in directly with the show, explaining things that were mysterious or unclear until you know what was going on in the Upside Down, which you're finding out now. And you get to see how resourceful and brave Will Byers really is. Um, this series is written by Jody Hauser, who is an excellent writer, um, art by Stefano Martino, Keith Champagne, and Lauren Aff. And the point uh, of the interiors, which I'll show you in a sec, um, they're all done in the style of comics from the 1980s to match the show. Um, the main covers are by Alexi Breeklop, um, and as I said, each one has three variant covers, so this time I'm really excited about them because they're some of my favorite artists. Um, so we have Ethan Young, oh, yeah. yeah, look at that, oh, that's and awesome. Jen Bartel, oh, who I love. Look at this yes. team. look what's happening here. I know, these are so good. <laughs> so good. We have Eleven, we have the Demogorgon, they're all amazing. I mean, I would want to collect them all. Yes. I just, yeah, I can't, I can't say enough good things about this. Uh, tell us, tell us in the comments below which, which ones you like the best, actually. Um, I can't choose. Yeah. So, and finally, we always have a photo variant cover as well. These are actually done by one of our designers yeah. here at Dark Horse, Patrick Satterfield. So, good job, Patrick. Yeah. This is a really cool photo too, or still from the show. Um, so, in issue number four, Will the Wise is all out of tricks. He's hunkered down in a makeshift fort and beginning to hallucinate from starvation, dehydration, and the terrors of the Upside Down. Find out what happens when the Demogorgon finally catches its prey. No one escapes a Demogorgon unscathed. Mm. And let's take a quick peek inside so you can see that artwork. So, like I said, this is done deliberately to look like a comic from the 80s, kind of a loose, sketchy style. I know that some people, it's maybe not as appealing to everyone, but that's the reason for it. It's done to look like a, an 80s comic. And if you didn't know, the back cover of all of these, um, when you get them together, issues one through four will form one larger image of all of the kids together. So, if you're a fan of Stranger Things, these comics are really good. The variant covers done by uh, guest artists are awesome. Look for them at your comic shop, pick them up. Issue number four concludes this miniseries. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so one 
uh, Netflix show to the yeah. next next right. show. <laughs> um, so the Umbrella Academy Hotel Oblivion number four. Uh, you're definitely going to want to check this out and all of the Umbrella Academy series out before the show next month. Um, so soon. It's it's going to be great. Everything is happening, guys. I'm so excited for the show. I know the show looks amazing. <sighs> yeah. Um, so this issue is this comic by Jared Way, My Chemical Romance fame, <laughs> and Gabriel Ba, with two covers by Ba and colors by Nick Flaherty, lettered by Nate Picos. Um, a heart-to-heart -heart with mother leads Vanya, aka the White Violin, to reassess what makes her special. Two of her siblings are caught in a shootout, and two more have have a cosmic moment while the bad guys infiltrate the hotel. This book is just like totally off the wall insane <laughs> in the best way, um, in a way that I think Gerard does really well. I did super well on the previous Umbrella series and Doom Patrol and that kind of stuff, and this art uh, is incredible. Gabriel Ba is a one-of-a-kind artist, I think. Um, and the whole team works really well together. I think the letters are really good in this book as well. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So far, I'm really liking this. It's I'm so happy to have the Umbrella Academy back. Yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a little while, but it was worth the wait. It's been gone. I know they long. they've been working or thinking about this for a long time. Yeah. Um, I really like these covers too. Yeah. This cover in particular, and then each variant is that kind of yellow. Uh, you know, focus on some of the new characters they've been introducing. So, yeah, some some interesting new got some more people and art. Cool stuff. Try not to like spoil. And Gabriel oh, and Gerard are like two of the nicest guys ever. Yes. So it's really awesome when we get to have them at shows with us. Um, looking forward to that next year too. Mm. As the year goes on. Yeah. Umbrella Academy. All right. Well. We're going to come back to some Mignola now. Um, BPRD, the devil you know, number 12. Uh, the BPRD desperately grasps for a plan to save humanity from a deep-seated danger, while Hellboy is visited by an old acquaintance with new information. So this continues the series by Mike Mignola with art by Lawrence Campbell and colors, of course, by Dave Stewart. Give you a little peek inside here. There's those classic dark colors yeah. by Stewart. Things are really starting to heat up in BPRD. Um, if you've been following along, you know that we're headed toward a pretty, probably epic conclusion Enormous. pretty soon. Yeah. There's a lot going on. We'll have another BPRD collection coming up in a minute here, which we'll show you. Um, but definitely get in on this series now. The Devil You Know is fantastic, and any Hellboy fan is going to want to see where this is going. For sure. So it's been a long time coming, lots of plans coming together. Sweet. And this book just couldn't wait till we got to the collection nope. section, so <laughs> we're going to skip there. right to Black Hammer Volume 3, Age of Doom, Volume 1, uh, trade paperback. Um, this picks off where the uh, first Black Hammer series uh, concluded, I guess is uh, not really concluded. Left you but, on yeah, a cliffhanger. Exactly. <laughs> um, but this book is amazing, so you're going to want to get this one. Um, Lucy Weber has become the new Black Hammer, and just as she's about to reveal to our heroes how they got stuck on the farm and can escape, she vanishes. Now our new Black Hammer finds herself trapped in a gritty world filled with punk rock detectives, emo gods, anthropomorphic humans, absurdist heroes, and many mo more weirdos in a mad world in which there is no escape. This collects issues 1 through 5 um, from Jeff, Dean, Ormson, uh, Dave Stewart, and Todd Klein, uh, with a lot of varying covers in the back by amazing artists. Uh, I'll show you, all of these pages are great, but yeah. Here's I really one. love this scene with basically the Ramones. Oh, yes. <laughs> there is some quality uh, Ramon zombie content in this book. Um, but I also wanted to show off some of the sketchbook section, which I'm going to flip to right now, because it's a lot of really cool stuff. You get, uh, let's not spoil the very ending of the book. Uh, you get, uh, <laughs> A lot of Dean's uh, process in this, which is really cool to see. Um, and his line work is crazy. You're definitely going to want to check out the Black Hammer Director's Cut, which comes out yeah. soon also, um, which has a full issue's worth of his pencils and inks. So. Very yeah. exciting. Yeah, our sketchbook material in these is so cool. Like It, yeah. it makes the collections so worth it. For Plus sure. you get all the cool cover art. Yeah. Yeah, Age of Doom so far. I, in this one, we're starting to get into like the Vertigo era, era oh, of comics. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. So if you're a fan of that era, which I am, this is yeah. especially fun. And there's a callback to one of Jeff's 
previous uh, yeah. Vertigo books in this. Yeah. So, yeah. so meta. Just, I, I can't <laughs> handle the layers, honestly. So. Uh, well, speaking of Vertigo, actually, um, so Olivia Twist is an ongoing uh, miniseries from Burger Books, which is edited by Karen Berger, who is, of course, the founding editor of Vertigo, who is now with us at Dark Horse, giving us all kinds of exciting new talent and new stories. Um, Olivia Twist number four is the fourth and final issue of this particular miniseries. Um, and as you can see, I'm so excited to show this off. Um, this issue features gorgeous cover art by Santa Takeda. Um, if you don't know who that is, I don't know where you've been. She's the <laughs> artist on Monstrous, which has won about a million awards. Yeah, I think so. she won like five Eisners this year. Yeah, pretty much. And then like every lots, other award too. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that means Black Hammer didn't win as many, but it's okay. <laughs> but it was worth it because Monstrous is amazing. Mm. Anyway, so Santa Takeda is fantastic. She did the cover art for this. Um, this series just has a star-studded uh, group of creators working on it. Um, it's written by Darren Strauss, who is a best-selling author. Um, you might know him from books like Chang and Ang, The Real McCoy, or the latest one is Half a Life. Um, also co-written by Adam Dalva, who's another prolific writer. Um, with art by Emma Vicelli, who does a lot of other comics art like Young Avengers, Doctor Who, and colors by Lee Luffridge. So we have a pretty serious team here. Um, this is a futuristic steampunk dystopian take on the Dickens classic, Oliver Twist, of course. Um, and this one features female leads. Olivia Twist has lost everything, her new friends and her rediscovered family, and her last hope to save them is a desperate solo rescue into the vertical city. But waiting for her at the top of the dangerous tower is Chris, Christian Crespo, whose plans are revealed. Can Olivia reclaim what is rightfully hers, or will she be swept up in the dark designs for world domination? So, even if you've read Oliver Twist, this is different. This is something new, and it's a really fun series with beautiful artwork. I really can't recommend it highly enough. Um, if you're not reading it already, it's just four issues, so you should be able to catch up pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Sword Daughter. She back. Sword Daughter. It's so a Sword Daughter number five. Um, these covers, one by Mac Trader, one by Greg Smallwood. Uh, the Viking Revenge Saga from Brian Wood, <clears throat> Mac Trader, and Jose Villarubia on colors, and Nate Picos again on letters. As spring nears and the snow thaws, violence once again threatens Dag and Elspeth, and a desperate choice is made in Viking Russia. Another crisis is unfolding. Uh, I especially like this book because uh, one of the main characters is named after one of my favorite Magic the Gathering planeswalkers. <laughs> oh, that, I didn't even pick up on that. You're welcome, everyone. Nice. Uh, all the nerd stuff here. That, this is, is, that is extra nerd. <laughs> Good job. The art in this book, I, Mac is really going to like new levels of greatness. Uh, and there's a cute animal on this page, so I definitely yes. want to highlight oh, it. Is it the fox? I love it the is, fox. Is, yes. 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 Um, but I, I think Mac is doing a lot of great uh, silent storytelling with his art in this as well. Um, and Mac and Brian Wood have worked a lot together, so they mm -hmm. have a great chemistry with this, and Jose's color is always great. So. Yeah, this is a really fun series. Yeah. I love the concept, taking Vikings, mixing it with like samurai revenge kind of a thing. Yeah. Lone Wolf and Cub-esque. Very Lone Wolf and Cub-esque. Yeah. Also, I forgot to mention, I should have mentioned that this is a prestige format book, so it's 32 pages with fancy, uh, thicker cover. It's yeah. a very nice product. So. Lots of extra story pages. Yeah. Yeah, the burger books are like that, too. They have the nice, thick cover stock and extra story pages. Well, we have some new horror this week also in The Whispering Dark number three um, in this issue. An army pilot confronts a supernatural horror in this thriller in the tradition of Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness and Coppola's Apocalypse Now. The fragility of the human body and mind is laid bare as Hannah Vance battles behind enemy lines, desperately pursuing a promise of home that recedes from her approach. So this is an ongoing series by Christopher Emgard and Tomas Ira. Um, again, it, it is kind of a blend of different horror traditions from Lovecraft to the sort of war horror of Apocalypse Now. Um, so this is a, issue number three once again, and if you love horror, I suggest checking it out. Yeah. Ah, running out of room. Oh no. I'm just gonna put that right there. Now moving on to the 
collections and books for real this time. Big one. Uh, we'll start with BPRD Hell on Earth Volume 4. Uh, the first book that I got to talk about that I worked on as an intern. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Um, so the BPRD continues to lead the defense against the apocalyptic Agdru Hem from Japan to America. The team splits up and Kate is possessed. A team of agents find themselves attempting to liberate a small town that holds secret from Howard's past as well. Elsewhere, the BPRD field agent Ashley Strode attempts to purge a demon from a hundred-year-old exorcist, utilizing a deadly rite that sends both of them to a spiritual hell and sending, the, sending her on a path to battling a demon who is kidnapping and eating children. It's a choice. Um, Not the children. This collects a uh, previously collected uh, uh, BPRD Hell on Earth volumes 10, 11, and 14 uh, with incredible art from James Harron. Lawrence Campbell, Joe Chiero, Mike Norton, and Tyler Crook, and Dave Stewart, as always. As um, always. And the, again, much like our other uh, collections, the sketchbook sections in these are crazy good and have the, all the monster designs, so you're definitely going to want to check this out. Um, the book also looks great on your bookshelf, um, it does. which I can attest to. <laughs> I definitely buy all of these. Um, yeah, get in on the hardcover. Well, you can. For sure. Because eventually, as with all things, they will go to paperback. Yes. But these hardcover collections are beautiful. Yeah. I love the sketchbook sections yeah. for these. They're worth it for that alone, in my opinion. Putting these books together is always so much fun, because we get to kind of pick and choose all the sketchbook stuff. It is does kind of suck if we have to pull stuff out, but yeah. putting it all there is so much fun. I'm sure you end all. up with more than you can ever oh, yeah. use. Definitely. Unfortunately, yeah, and it's fun too because then the artists get to see it, and I don't know if they want to share a little extra, yeah, like yeah. things that maybe didn't make it in the book. Uh, we're always happy to share that too. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool to see their process and kind of hear the commentary. Sometimes we get notes from people like Brett or Katie, um, the lead editor, who, you know, just about how they picked it out and put it together. Yeah. Or things like how Mike drew the goose over and over and over and it never actually made it onto a cover for Kashe. Just Mike just drawing things. Just drawing just things. Drawing just things. trying things. Yeah. Like ah, I don't like that. Ah uh, that yeah. You get you get the little insider perspective. Yeah. Alright. Totally different but also exciting. Gantz. So Gantz is of course an extremely popular manga series. We have now started putting it out in these nice big omnibus editions so that you get it all kind of collected in one easy to afford paperback format. So Gantz consists of ordinary Tokyo citizens resurrected from death, and the team is conscripted by a mysterious black orb to fight bizarre deadly aliens in a lethal game that promises a return to normal life or oblivion. But the game's purpose is unclear, and the stakes are far greater than survival. I'm actually going to show you a little bit of the interiors, even though it's Gantz, so it's real violent. So let's take a pe peek. Don't tell anyone that we showed you. Woo! Um, so, a disturbingly realistic science fiction horror epic, of course. This is by Hiroya Oku. Um, this took Japan by storm, spawned an anime series, live-action films, and video games. It is explicitly adult. It is not for the kids or the squamish. Um, and this volume, again, brings it into a 650-page format. Um, value priced $24.99 US, $33.99 Canada. And if you don't know Gantz, the omnibus volumes are a really good way to start. Um, again, this is volume two, so volume one should be out already in your bookstores. This will be in comic shop first and then in bookstores two weeks after that. Yes. So get that. When you can. For sure. Now another gigantic book, uh, The Conan Reader. Uh, <laughs> nearly 700 pages of clashing swords, evil wizardry, and forgotten kingdoms. This collects uh, a bunch of one-shot short stories and miniseries from crazy good creators Kevin Busick, P. Craig Russell, Fred Van Lanty, Kelly Jones, Ariel Vetti, Dave Stewart, and many more. Um, if you're a Conan fan, definitely want to check check this book out. It's got all of the beautiful Conan goodness. Um, my personal favorite artist in this is Kelly Jones, so I'm going to open to the <laughs> Kelly Jones page. Um, nice. Who's, I feel every time I get to see his art, it's always a treat. So. I love Kurt Busiek's writing yeah. as well, So, and I know that's a lot of people's favorite Conan run, 
So this is a really good pickup for a big Conan fan. For sure. And this is going to be our last Conan book before it moves on. Oh, so sad. So, yeah. It was I a good run, though. And it will continue on elsewhere, so. True, true. All right. Kind of similar, and actually P. Craig Russell is on both of these. Um, this is an exciting one that we are both excited to tell you about, actually. Um, this is P. Craig Russell's The Ring of the Nibelung. Um, this collects both volumes in one trade paperback for the first time. This is an Eisner Award-winning series adapted for comics by P. Craig Russell. Um, this, of course, adapts the epic by... Oh! <laughs> this book is so epic that it just knocked all the other books over. <laughs> Nobody can handle it. Um, so this is uh, the ring cycle basically adapted into comics. Um, so I'm going to show you some artwork because that's the most important part. If you don't know the ring cycle, this is still a great way to kind of pick it up, but I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. Here's some fun art. Uh, giants plot against gods who turn, in turn tear human lovers apart while the lives of great warriors are ruined and murder after murder is committed in the name of love and gold. It's the epic as it was meant to be read. This new high point in Russell's distinguished career as a true artist artist includes lots of behind the scenes production art and all kinds of other goodies, which I am gonna show you because like Brett and I have been saying, these collections include all kinds of cool bonuses. So here you can see some of the German being translated. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. As well as some little sketches. Brett, what, what is your favorite thing about this book? Uh, well, I really just enjoyed like looking at the way <laughs> that Craig adapted this visually. Because mm -hmm. um, I feel like opera to comics is definitely not a common thing. Right. Um, but Craig like is just a master storyteller, so he really hammered home right, some uh, more the pacing stuff. and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, he, is, he adapts American Gods and lots of Neil Gaiman yeah. for us. Um, here's some more kind of showing you the adaptation process. So again, this is all collected in the back of this deluxe paperback, um, full color format. This is only twenty four ninety nine, which is pretty yeah. crazy. It's a lot of yeah. story for, for that, so. Yeah. How long did this take you guys to put together? Uh, well, since we have put, a, Previous put it material. in a giant hardcover before, right? Uh, it it was an interesting experience uh, getting it all together for this. But um, do you have to condense it much? A little bit. Yeah. Um, it's but this makes no. it you know nice and affordable in a in a paperback, which yeah. is something that we're trying to do with a lot of our big deluxe collections for people. Yeah. So it's still beautiful. Very nicely produced hardcover, or sorry, paperback. Um, it's gonna hold up, it's all full color, really nice. I can't, like, this is just a beautiful package. So sure. if you're into P. Craig Russell's um, gorgeous comic adaptations, if you like Wagner, if you like The Ring Cycle, um, I just, fantasy artwork, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. We're, almost, we're almost done. All right, this is the last one. This, this is the last, last one. one. So, <clears throat> the next chapter in Witchfinder, Witchfinder Volume 5, The Gates of Heaven, uh, from Craig, Chris Roberson. Uh, <laughs> a lot of Craig Russell happening. Uh, <laughs> new uh, artists for the Hellboy world, or the Magnoliaverse, Disraeli, and colors by Michelle Madsen, and letters by Clem Robbins. Um, a series of occult events mystifies the Witchfinder, but even more surprising is the revelation that he is not alone in exploring the paranormal in London. When a personal investigation uh, invitation arrives, from the palace, Sir Edward Grey is pulled even deeper into the underground supernatural exploration alongside new allies in the race to stop a mad scientist from destroying London in his pursuit of mystical power. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this volume collects Witchfinder Gates of Heaven 1 through 5, plus lots of bonus material. Um, I think for Roberson is especially uh, equipped to write Witchfinder. <laughs> uh, he really nails the cadence of the dialogue in this book. Um, this was a lot of fun to read. Definitely one to check out. I really like the art of Disraeli. Yeah. It's it's really different from previous Witchfinder. Real different. Yeah, yeah very. Yeah. But it really works. Yeah. Um, once you get used to it, and I know there's been some talk, Clem Robbins actually used an entirely different lettering to kind of go along with the different art for this, and it works really well. Yeah. Here's some of that sketchbook stuff, sketchbook greatness. Yeah. 
Yeah. A really cool sketchbook for this one too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is really fun. I if you haven't read Witchfinder, I really recommend it for any fans of Vignola. Um this again is kind of Victorian England pre Hellboy, but in that same universe. Um really fun, interesting occult investigation stuff. Yeah. And that's it. So good. That's all we got. It's a lot. Um, if you want to win all of this stuff, remember all you need to do is share this video here on Facebook um, and then check back tomorrow because uh, we're going to pick a winner. So it's pretty easy to win a lot of really awesome comics and books. Yes. For sure. Well, thanks for joining us again, Brett. Oh, of course. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Ramble about books. So. Yeah, that's what we like to do. Yeah. All right, well, we'll be back next week. Tune in on Wednesday to see what's new then. And in the meantime, don't forget to share and have a good rest of your Wednesday. Bye, guys. Bye.